Hello all. It's actually been a couple of years since I put my original video out on the Arduino Password Vault. Um, and I figured it's about time I put an update on it and I actually want to do some work on it. So uh, you can see I have have made some progress from the version that was running on the old um, Tiny Lab version that, uh, that was demonstrated in the video that I posted two years ago. I breadboarded it up using a different microcontroller board here. Um, and uh, I've actually been using it as a standby. I, sometimes I'll even, uh, if I travel, I'll pull this off. Uh, the, the one thing that makes this a little bit of a pain to work with is that since it's Arduino, uh, if anytime you make changes to your passwords, you've got to basically make a new script and, and reprogram the Arduino chip. Of course, that's also um, one of the strengths of it. If, if I put this, if I rewrote this for MicroPython, um, and it would be much easier to get the passwords onto it, but then it would be also easier to get them off of it if, if I ever lost this or someone took it or something like that. So the fact that it's not easy to access the, uh, the data that's stored on the Arduino uh, chip uh, is, is a strength. But uh, as I say, I've been uh, using this for my storing my passwords and entering them into my web applications uh, or PC applications, anything that needs a password typed in, a username and a password typed into the uh, computer for the last couple of years, and it's been working great. But I always had the idea that it would be nice to get it to run inside one of these, uh, put the put the display up here, and then have the keys down or something like that. Um, so I finally uh, designed a, a little board to plug everything in uh, on JLC PCB. Um, first board I did on that. So and so this is this is the actual circuit board design in Easy EVA, which is kind of um, the the design package that supports JLC PCB uh, for the for the manufacturing. And uh, you know, I, I learned a couple things. When I first put this design together, you'll notice that uh, this mask doesn't have all those nice labels uh, for the pins. And you can uh, see the password vault label here. But I actually put that in as um, I had the wrong mask selecting when I was in the Easy EVA. And uh, I ended up, rather than the silk screen mask that you see here, I was uh, actually using copper traces. Um, and so when I tested, checked it, the um, I had all sorts of errors with the uh, copper traces intersecting with, uh, with, with the between, between pins and the keypad uh, headers and the resistor. Um, so I, I, and at first I didn't know if I deleted all the, slink, uh, the silk screen marks, well, well, what I thought was silk screen marks. So I deleted all the labels that were interfering. And, and later on I figured out that I had put copper traces in instead of silk screen. So I'm going to go ahead and solder some headers on this and put a resistor in there. And, um, See, make, get it working on this, and that'll be the first step. Well, hopefully, uh, eventually, we'll punch some holes in this, and it'll, I'll, I'll have to figure out some, the ribbon cables to get things connected properly. But that's the goal, and I figured I'd, about time I made some progress on moving forward. I've also done some work on the software running here. Um, the, the version that's out on GitHub was out on GitHub. Um, you had to kind of manually add the new passwords in the order that you wanted them to show up on the display. Um, so I've the, the version that's out there now, and the one that I've been using on here, basically will sort the, all the, uh, the the passwords that you have stored. So when you're adding new ones, you can just add them to the bottom of the list, and you don't have to worry about uh, rearranging the, them and coordinating them with the, the description versus the passwords. It all just sorts them all together. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of soldering. But don't worry, I'll cut the boring bits and speed it way up in post. So actually, the first thing I have to do is get the uh, get my headers set up. Um, so basically, I just take these long headers and you have to cut them to the right length. So I need one that's a five pin header and one that's a eight pin header. It'd be nice if we got them to be sticking out straight. Aesthetically pleasing. Alright. Fortunately my soldering iron keeps cutting out. I don't know, it must be some power save setting. But I can download some firmware or something for it and prove it. We'll have to let it get back up to 320. Only saving grace is it's a pretty quick uh, iron. There we go. And I'm going to switch to my more powerful glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I swapped out the head from the wedge head to the point. I'll just wait for the uh, soldering iron to heat up again. And we'll try this again. I have a minimum order of five boards from JLC PCB anyways. So if I screw this up, I probably won't try to recover any of this. I'll just start on another board. 
wouldn't that be a kicker if this uh, socket, the pins are too wide for the socket. <laughs> this socket was designed for ICs back in the day. This is an old socket. Chips, the pin, these headers are bigger than the socket. And I don't think that's going to go in. Let's see if it's got enough of a contact. All right. Let's see if it starts up. Getting a little light on there, but doesn't look like it's starting. Oh, there we go. Success. Let's see if I let go of it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Seems to be working. So it's been about a week since that soldering session. Uh, I, I ended up having to trash that board because I couldn't get the socket to work with the trinket. Um, as you can see, it's uh, progressed quite a bit. Uh, unfortunately, it uh, turned out I didn't quite spec it quite right. Uh, games, but I had to plug everything into it and keep uh, getting the screen on it. I, I ran into all sorts of problems. So uh, instead, I went to Micro Center and for two bucks or something like that, I got this Pi 4 case, which has got nice rubber feet. Um, and uh, some already had a number of holes. I had to extend it a little. I see my finally engineered opening for the power cord, the USB cord. Um, and then I put some headers on uh, for both the display and the keyboard plug. So that plugs into there. I'm, I'm going to get some properly sized headers. Uh, right now I'm just using a full uh, Raspberry Pi GPIO header um, here temporarily. I mean, it, it fits into this hole because that's what this was actually designed for. Uh, although I did have to extend it a little bit because I wanted the display off to the side. Uh, and um, so I've soldered the uh, Trinket Pro 3 volt version uh, directly onto the uh, motherboard, uh, onto my PCB that I designed. So I guess now let's, uh, why don't we put this back together and we'll take a look at its operation. Uh, so a couple of the mistakes I made is um, this, this pin, I had been always using this with some header pins in here. Um, so I thought that this was a male connector and not realizing that it's actually a female with the headers on there. Um, and so I put a, soldered a female header into that socket. If I had to put a male one in, uh, it would have sat lower and uh, just made it a, a little nicer of a configuration. Um, but uh, so this works. Um, and then uh, the other mistake I made was I actually, uh, first the first time I put this together, I put a, I had an old uh, socket back from, that I got back in college days back in the 80s, uh, and I, I soldered that in place, and it turned out it was made for an old IC chip, and these pins were much too thick to fit into it. Uh, so then, uh, when you order these, uh, the minimum order is five, so I wasn't too worried about it, so I had four more to spare. So I basically just tossed that one, and then uh, re-soldered this one in, but I re-soldered it, soldered it directly into the board, and had, had I to do it again, I would probably have soldered down a couple of, of uh, header pins, sort of like these, uh, and then that way I could swap this out, because um, then I, then I probably would have thrown out the second board and, and gone ahead and put the male headers in here. But as it stands, it, uh, it's probably not worth throwing away a couple dollars. I mean, this is only worth probably about 10 bucks for a pro trinket, but uh, it's, it's probably not worth uh, wasting that just because uh, I, I put the wrong header on there. So this kind of just snaps together. And this pops in here. I'm going to go ahead and power it up. And so as the trinket boots up, we should get a couple messages. And it sorts it, and we get the lock. So I did post a new release of the, the C++ code that runs this. When I ver converted it from the Leonardo to the trinket, I found that the trinket had a slightly different way of dealing with the pretending it's a keyboard. And I basically had to, every 10 milliseconds, make sure that I made a, a specific call uh, otherwise, the computer would get confused and basically throw some errors, uh, saying it was a keyboard error. Let's see if I unlock it. So if I'm scrolling down, I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I keep the speed at a certain speed so it doesn't fly too fast. So I have to, I have to do delays um, if I push it. it, it there are also the delays built in there, and whenever I'm doing a delay, I have to make sure that not more than 10 milliseconds goes by before I, I make that call to um, prevent the, the desktop errors. Uh, let me bring up the code. So at the start of the code, I've got a, um, a, a an array of characters which represent the, the pin codes that are required to unlock it. So in the sample version, uh, it's three two two four one. This can be any length, uh, it can be you know, from one to whatever length you want it. Um, and then so there are three structures: uh, the site name structure, and then the usernames that go along with them. These, the third structure is the password structure. Um, so. They all sort. Um, 
take a quick look. So this is the, the little subroutine that um, basically makes sure that I'm pulling against the keyboards to make sure that I don't get the, um, the keyboard errors. So I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.